I've been up for far too long um, for a normal person, but I also have a autoimmune condition and I sleep more often. So I am out of my mind exhausted, but I drink too much caffeine and I have thoughts in my head. So I have an inability to fall asleep. So that said, I'm going to try and get this out as quickly as I can and and try to be brief, although I don't see how I can be. Um, I was watching Benjamin Boyce's video with Lisa Shoup, just premiered several hours ago. And, uh, oh man, my head hurts, sorry. And this video really bothered me because uh, I saw myself in Lisa to a scary extent. Yeah, I'm, I'm really upset by it. Um, and she was upset in the video as well, in the interview. And understandably so, anyone would be. And she's not going to ever get the help she needs, and I probably won't either. I will say, if there's one thing I want to distance myself from in terms of Lisa Shoup's opinions, it's the Blanchardian garbage. Um, I think people put way too much interest in Blanchard. He may or may not be right, but uh, I, I've personally not experienced autogynophilia to that extent. Um, and uh, I, I just don't get the uh, autogynophilic thing. So for me, it's uh, it's just garbage, but I know some people do experience that, so for them it's probably very real. And so there's something there, but for me it just it doesn't make any sense. Um, otherwise, I'm basically the same as Lisa. I have BPD, I have this gender dysphoria, and I wish conversion therapy was legal because I'm not going to get the help I need, and neither is she. And we're just going to suffer our whole lives. Um, and I knew this. I knew this. Uh, I knew this before I transitioned. I still went through with it for whatever fucking reason. And I still might go through with it for whatever fucking reason. I'm trying not to. There's so much I need to talk about. Let me, um... Let me pull up, hold on one second. So the video that I watched is titled The Burden of Autogynophilia with Lisa Shoup. I talk about a lot more than autogynophilia, although that is the main topic because that is what she believes the main thing that she deals with is. I actually don't think that's the main thing that she deals with. I don't know her. She knows herself way better than I ever will. I saw one video of her, so I could be entirely wrong. But she seems a lot like me in some ways. And I connected emotionally there. And I don't do that often unless I see something in someone that I connect, I, I, I relate to. And so I think the main thing that she's actually dealing with is not autogynophilia. I think, that, I think that's part of it. I think the main thing is borderline personality disorder. Borderline personality disorder mixed with something that we haven't even figured out yet, which I will call gender obsession or gender OCD, which is a term that was coined a while back by many uh, detransitioned people. Gender OCD. So it's a form of obsessive compulsive disorder that deals entirely with gender dysphoria. And it stems from the idea that if you have gender dysphoria, you should transition. The treatment is transition. And if you don't transition, your gender, dys your gender dysphoria will get worse. This is, this is the perfect mindset, the perfect formulation to create a mindset of obsession in someone with a borderline brain. 
for someone with a borderline brain, you're basically telling them, you know, because borderline people, they change their identity every hour, every minute, every, every day for sure. So you're telling them, okay, well, if you don't know who you are, you know, you might be trans. If you're trans, you might have gender dysphoria. If you have gender dysphoria, you got to transition because that ain't going away otherwise. In fact, it'll probably get worse. And you give the borderline person enough time, they're going to transition. And the way I, and, and it's funny, I think they actually did use an alcoholic analogy in that exact interview. I've used that same analogy before. I just realized that just now because I was about to say, I, I, I actually have an analogy for it. And, I, and then I thought, wait, they actually used a similar one in that interview. I, I wasn't fully listening at that part. I was in the middle of some programming I'm doing. But um, yeah, I've used that alcoholic analogy before where, look, you put an alcoholic in a room filled with alcohol, give him enough time, the guy's going to drink some alcohol. You put a borderline person in a room full of identity, give them enough time, and they're going to have tried every identity in that room and believed it to be the right one at some point. I mean, what else do you expect? <laughs> it's like, duh. You know, it's like, for me, for a borderline person, like, it's like, well, yeah, of course. Duh. That's going to happen. There's no question. It won't even take that long. Give me a week. I'll have tried 70 different identities. Um, you know, and, and I'll, have gone, I'll have gone into the whole idolization phase and the devaluation phase. I'll, 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 have, I'll have put the identity on a pedestal and believed it to be true and, and everything I needed in life. And then I'll have dismissed it as fake and false and lies and garbage and, and pain and everything that's wrong in the universe. Um, and very quickly. And that is what you're doing. That's what we're doing in this society. Now, this is not all trans people. It's just not. But it is the borderline trans people. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna title this video, you know, um, do not, mm, like something something like don't transition if you have BPD and maybe in parentheses Benjamin Boyce and Lisa Shoup because that video really sparked this in me I've been feeling this for a long time and um, I'm kind of pissed off honestly because I've seen this clear as day for a while now and nobody I talk to, I talk to four gender therapists, nobody I talk to gets it. Nobody I talk to will, or even if they do get it, they can't help, because there's no, there's no science on this. So, because we're not studying it, and we're not going to with the way the gender nonsense is going. So, people like me are fucked. <laughs> and, uh, are being effectively manipulated by the medical industry into transitioning with no way out, despite the fact that we might want out, we have no way out because the dysphoria and identity issues and everything are too severe. We can't have conversion therapy. We can't have gender therapists who actually get us in touch with reality which borderline people desperately need more than most people. I'm going to mute the mic for a second so you don't have to listen to this. Oh, that was some good water, man. Okay. So, so yeah, I'm pretty... I'm pretty fucking pissed. Um, I don't even know what to say about it. Other than, like, I don't have a solution. Nobody does. There's no science on this. But what is happening right now, and this is the takeaway for the video, is that borderline people who are fine, they're fine. Maybe they're a little autogynephilic, you know? 
but they're fine. You don't have to castrate them yet. Yet. At a certain point, you do have to castrate them because of the way society brainwashes them. But they're fine. Maybe they cross-dress. You know, maybe they do all sorts of things. Maybe they wear makeup. Maybe they, you know, whatever. Maybe they fantasize. But they're men. They're fine. You don't have to castrate them. You don't have to, you know, put them into this obsessive hell that they end up being in that I was in for two years and got out of recently. I'm currently detransitioned, but I have not been for long. And the thoughts of retransitioning are daily. Um, but they're daily, regardless of whether I'm transitioning or not. If I'm transitioning, the thoughts of detransitioning are daily, because I hate it. And if I'm detransitioned, the gender dysphoria is getting worse and it's severe and it bothers me because of the obsession that I've been given by this society. It is a societal thing. It is, well, it's an intersection between society and mental illness, which, duh, because mental illness is sort of created and defined by society. Um, so that's sort of a given. But, and when I say mental illness, like, people, people get it through their heads, a different idea than perhaps what I mean. Mental illness in general is just... Uh, uh, it's just the way your brain works. It, there's nothing necessarily even wrong with it. But the way it often intersects with reality, this reality, and society, and the reality of society, can be difficult or impossible. Um, and... If the reality were slightly different, or the society were slightly different, or something like that, or you were slightly different, I guess, too, but if any of those were slightly different, you'd be fine. Um, borderline is a personality disorder, so it's not so much a mental illness. I do think of it as that, though. Um, and the reason is because while it might not be truly a mental illness, although it is, it is, it can create mental illness, or at least a life that seems mentally ill. And uh, that's simply because of society, I think. So I have a comment here. I'm just going to read this, see if it jogs any more points. I feel quite similarly to Lisa. I don't think I'm AGP, but I do have severe BPD. Everything Lisa said about BPD is true. And as Benjamin pointed out, there's an obsessive component to this whole thing. If you go to DTrans subreddits, you'll see the obsessive component explained. If we didn't have the choice to do this, we never would want to. People like Lisa and myself have been manipulated by what we thought was real slash true due to our mental conditions. Nobody will ever actually help us. The help we want doesn't exist, and it isn't being researched. Gender therapists cannot give conversion therapy by law. A BPD person in a world of delusion is doomed to, to fall prey to delusion. And it's exactly what I said earlier about the alcoholic. Put an alcoholic in a room full of alcohol, give him enough time, and that alcohol will be gone. <laughs> you put a borderline person in a room of identity telling telling them that they just have to figure out their identity and if they don't it'll get worse and not only will they try all those identities but you'll give them an obsessive disorder I think or I've been up too long and I'm delusional <sighs> I don't know what's real and as much as it pains me to say it, I don't think society can help me. In fact, I think it can only hurt me in figuring out what's real.
I could end the video there, but I just feel like I should say my own personal feelings at the moment. I hate being a guy. But for many reasons, I really can't transition anymore because I see through it. I've come out the other end after thinking about this more than almost anyone on the planet. Even though I've not transitioned for very long, but you give my obsessive brain two years of thought alone in a room, that's enough time. And I've, for, I've sort of figured it out, at least for myself. For me, there's no autogonophilic component, really. Now, you might watch some of my earlier videos and say, well, that can't be true, because look, this is clearly autogynophilic behavior. And I would agree. But, look, I have a sense of humor, okay? I was learning violin so I could play Goodbye Horses, to one of my, early, my my first video where I'm like, you know, like this, and I'm like in a dress. I was going to play Goodbye Horses over that originally. Um, <laughs> and I didn't because it was too on the nose. Like people would be like, oh, so you're satirical. You're, you're, you're making fun of yourself. Sort of, but I wanted to sort of explore that autogynophilic space because I know autogynophiles and I was interested in that. And as a borderline, you give me something that I'm interested in, I'm going to explore it. The way I've always talked about borderline uh, is that it's, in a, it's, it's called the explorer's disease in my head. I call it the explorer's disease because we will explore every way of being. Um, you know, Lisa said something very interesting in that video. You know, she said that she wanted to throw all her stuff away. By the way, I love the video link down in the description, so check it out if you want. It's a little interview. Um, she said that she was throwing away all her stuff and, you know, wanted to live that minimalist life, right? And even I have too much, in my opinion. I'm constantly getting rid of more and more. Purging. I mean, there's it's a bin, a binging, purging. This is not just a autogynophilic thing. This is a borderline thing. This is a borderline thing. Autogynophil, autogynophiles do it too. They do it with gender. But borderlines, we do it with everything. We do it with friends, we do it with family, we do it with possessions, we do it with identities, we do it with everything. We, we binge on something or someone, and then we purge the something or someone. We become obsessive about something, and, we, and it's our whole essence, our whole being, and then we want nothing to do with it ever again. And it sounds bipolar, but it's not, because it... We, we can have a stable mood throughout it, um, although some usually not, but we can. And so the mood doesn't necessarily change as much as the identity, sense of self, um, way of seeing the world, way of seeing the self changes. And so not only is it an explorer's disease, but it's a... Oh, she said the perfect phrase in this interview, I think. Or at least something that made me think of the perfect phrase. And I don't have it anymore. And it's very sad. But it's something like... We have the enlightened disease. Not the explorer's disease, necessarily. That's what I used to think of it as. But this video, this video with Lisa and Benjamin, made me realize it's not... The explorer's disease, or maybe it is, but what I think a better description of it is, is the disease of enlightenment, right? Think about it. Think about a monk. 
And I've been, I've been so fascinated with monks since I was young because I'm borderline, just makes sense. I've been so fascinated with them. And now I realize why, because of this video with Lisa. Borderline people have the disease of enlightenment. Think about it, think about an enlightened person. What are they? They don't have any sense of ego or self. Now, they're more grounded because they've done that practice. Whereas we have something in us that allows our ego to dissolve whenever we want it to. We can have no ego. We can have no sense of self or any sense of self. We can, have, we can be nothing. We can be anything. We can be everything. We can be man. We, we can be woman. We can be wanting to be dead while wanting to live forever. We can be... We can want to be God, and we can want to be uh, pathetic, n just nothing. Um, let me catch my breath. Let me catch my breath for a second. So this personality disorder effectively gives borderline people this grasp on enlightenment without any of the training that needs to come with that. And so we have this enlightened sort of deep enlightened self where we have no identity, we can be anything, we can be nothing, which is literally, I mean, beautiful in a way, but when you experience it and you've not done any of that training in meditation, it's very hard to live. <laughs> I'll say that. It's very hard to be in society. Um, and then you find something that says, hey, we can fix that. You might be trans. You know, have you ever thought about that? And then you think about it as a borderline, you think about it. Gosh, you know, now that I think about it, I am trans. I hate my body. I hate myself. I've never felt like a man. Not a day in my life have I felt like a man. I'm talking, I am actually talking about me now. Not a day in my life have I felt like a man. Well, that's not normal, is it? Well, no, maybe not. But it doesn't mean I'm trans. <laughs> I've never felt like anything. And yet I felt like everything. I felt like a man. I felt masculine. I felt feminine. I felt like a woman. I felt like a trans-feminine person. I felt non-binary. I felt, I felt, I felt everything. If you're not borderline, you won't really understand the extent to which I am being fully honest right now. But if you are borderline, I just found an error in my code, actually. <laughs> there. Missed a semicolon for the end of the line. Um, but if you are uh, borderline, you'll understand it. You'll understand it perfectly. It's a gift, potentially. It's a curse, but it's a gift, potentially. We'd probably make the best monks. Monks could work for decades to rid themselves of ego. A borderline could do it in a week, <laughs> genuinely. With proper training, a borderline could rid themselves of self in a week. We're the perfect monk. I'm waiting for, well, I shouldn't wait. I should, I should meditate more. Anyway, I had to make this video. Even though, even though, um, 
most of the people on my channel will uh, be pretty upset by this in some way, I, I imagine. Um, because my channel originally started as very trans friendly, and now I'm suddenly a bigot because I'm telling the truth. Um, so be it. Tired of lying. I don't lie anymore. <clears throat> yeah. Try not to, anyway. Try not to. I'm too tired to form any more thoughts. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Check out uh, the link in the description for the video to Lisa and Ben talking about autogonophilia, transgender uh, ideology, and uh, hormones, and Lupron, and, and uh, dysphoria, and everything like that. And before I go, actually, just one last thing. I really saw myself in Lisa when she started crying. I felt like I knew exactly how much pain she was in. And I feel so bad for her and for myself if I end up in that same position again in the future. I've been there many times. Hundreds of hundreds of times over the past two years. That is not an exaggeration. And I think I've figured out a way to get away from that. But for how long, I don't know. How long can I detransition for? That's what I'm thinking now. Do you really have what it takes? It hasn't even been a week, and I'm already getting doubts. I don't want the dysphoria to increase. It's real. At least it is now. I guess what I'll end the video on is trans people who are borderline need serious help that they're never going to get because of the transgender rights people. Do not begin transition if you're borderline. If you have doubts and you're borderline, do not begin transition. If you begin it, you will be in exactly the hell that you already know you will be in. That's the thing. If I can find one person who is borderline and is considering it, and you already know the hell you're going into. You already know. And if, as soon as you go into it, that's it. You are fucked for life. So, get out and get away from all trans people and try to live a normal life before you ruin it. Yeah. All right. Take care.